What's up guys? It's Brad from Star City Meltdown. We're out on tour with Saliva for the next little while. Be sure and check out our new album, Music Equals War. Excellent. How you doing today, Brad? Doing good. We're here with uh, Brad at Viper Alley in Lincolnshire, Illinois. Uh, nice little venue here. What do you think about the venue today? Amazing venue. Have yet to be here. It's a nice, nice place. Brett, the original basis of Creed uh, produced both of your albums, that's correct? Yes. How did you end up hooking up with Brett, uh, getting him as a producer and then keeping him as a producer for both of them? Well, uh, we really just heard his name, you know, coming out of the production scene. And uh, I've always been a big fan of everything he's done and that is coming out of the studio. So we gave him a call and uh, headed down to Orlando and we're her very happy the first time and even more happy the second time so we'll probably be going with them again for the next very cool. one. And uh, your new album you mentioned earlier, Music Equals War, that's a pretty interesting title. Mm -hmm. um, that's your latest release. That means something to your band. Uh, can you talk, yeah, speak to that a little bit? <clears throat> yeah, uh, well it, it really just means it represents everything we've been in the through with the last couple of years, uh, touring as hard as we can, pretty much doing everything ourselves, and uh, then signing a record deal, and uh, pretty much just the war that we've been through with the record label and, and booking agencies and, and management and all kinds of things, uh, just to get our music heard. And uh, so we've, you know, pretty much been to war to get it released, so we called it Music Equals War. Nice. What What are some of the obstacles that you uh, have been through oh. or have overcome? Oh, goodness. Uh, just mainly false promises, you know. Uh, we work so hard at this and and do everything we can and to, you know, try and get out there and, and play for our fans and, and make new fans and, and do everything with well, this is our lives we you know we've sacrificed so much uh, for music and uh, you know we make we sign agreements with you know contracted promises and those promises a lot of times just don't come through right. and it's yeah, if it's the way, frustrating. If the yeah. label's not pushing you, if your agent's not booking you, then yeah. you're not getting in front of the fans exactly. that you desperately need in this day and age. Exactly. Yeah. We as musicians, we generally don't like labeling ourselves, but there's a, um, within the last few years, this label of active rock mm -hmm. has been floating around. And, and that's mm -hmm. probably, would you say, that's probably the closest genre we could plug you into if we had to? Uh, as a matter of fact, I would like to think so. Uh, just mainly because you know I'm I'm a big metal fan and and a, a fan even a pop fan fan of everything but you know active radio rock uh, I mean who isn't a fan of that you know you think yeah. of all the band the, you know we're all well, big what, what is active radio rock hmm. or active rock what is that genre can you sum it up in a couple of sentences active rock I guess you would say is just rock music pretty much simplified and uh, you know, just has a lot of catchy melodies and and uh, musical parts, and, and we're all fans of. We've all been fans of that. We're all kids from the '80s, you know. So, right. I mean, we it, grew up. There definitely seems to be kind of an '80s influence, like not necessarily mm -hmm. with the hair. I mean, mm -hmm. maybe with some of the joke bands out there, like yeah. Steel Panther, but yeah. Um, you know, but oh, definitely amazing, in the music. Oh, you know, they are an amazing <laughs> band, but you know, they they don't take themselves seriously either. So that's good. But uh. In just the, you know, just good old-fashioned rock and roll bands like the Las Vegas have come out with a very classic sound, but mm. modernized, you mm. know, Hinder, mm. a lot of these bands, Art of Dying, you know, yeah. we can name a ton. Yeah. Um, but they definitely, you know, everybody's kind of wearing that 80s love on their sleeve. Mm. And, yeah, uh, definitely. I'm from that era too, so yeah. that's awesome. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> what, who are some of your favorite bands from uh, any era? From any era? Uh, so many. Uh, my main influence is uh, early on, the thing that got me started was, you know, Metallica and uh, actually a little bit more metal stuff, but then... Uh, anthrax. Yeah, Anthrax, <laughs> yeah. And then uh, got into Guns N' Roses and uh, Rush and 
pretty much every band from the 80s. You know, there were so many good ones. What, what about on the pop side? On the pop side, uh, everything, pretty much. Uh, m big, big Genesis fan. Nice. You know, Phil, anything Phil Collins did was... Uh, I, I just remember re sitting in the back of my mother's uh, old Oldsmobile Delta 88, you know, back in the 80s, sitting in the back seat listening to Phil Collins and Rod Stewart and, and all that stuff, you know. So those guys had a big influence on me too. Nice. You've been around for, you've been touring, um, you've been touring off and on with Slava for mm -hmm. a couple of years now, right? Mm -hmm. Two albums out, mm -hmm. right? Um, what kind of advice can you give to an artist who, you know, maybe they, maybe they don't even have a band. Maybe they're just songwriters sitting home in their basement. They really want to do something with it, but they're not sure where to start. And what kind of advice could you give to uh, people out there like that? It's funny because uh, the main advice I can give is not advice I would I would give when I started because uh, we're rock and roll is in a or the music industry in general is uh, pretty crazy and it's it's pretty much done a whole you know 180 in the last 10 years right and uh, nowadays it's a little bit more complicated I guess I would say first of all you know work on your product make sure that you're happy with it and it's what you want to portray to you know potential fans be true to yourself and uh, Get good on the internet. <laughs> yeah. In promotion. At, yes. Yeah. Uh, find a group of guys. You know, make sure you're in a in a group of guys that that are all hard workers on and off stage, and whether that be with prom internet promotion or booking your own gigs. You know, uh, we do a lot of that ourselves too. Nice. And uh, it's hard work. But you just got to learn and you got to adapt because this business changes every couple of months. So that would be my advice. <laughs> <laughs> nice. And uh, so what's next on the on the schedule for Star City? Uh, well, first thing on the agenda is uh, we're going to go home for the holidays and hang out with the families. Lucas, our lead guitar player, he's uh, he and his fiance are about to have a baby girl. Nice in January so we're gonna take a little bit of time off and uh, gonna head back out on a southeast you tour. You guys are all gonna be like uncles. Yeah, yes. yeah I'm kind of <laughs> excited. First band baby. Uh, but we're doing a, we're planning a, uh, a February southeast tour right now. So we'll be down south and uh, as far as that, that's our plans. <laughs> right. any, what about uh, any new music on the horizon? Or how, how long has this record been out? Uh, this record's only been out for a month. Uh, but oh, this one was just released. Okay. Yeah, it was just released. Uh, it was supposed to be released a long time ago. So, <laughs> yeah, we've we've already got a lot of new material. Um, probably at least an album's worth <laughs> of new nice. material. So. As soon as as soon as we can find a way to get that, uh, get that going and get down back to Brett or whoever we work with, and uh, you know, get them tracked. There's a lot of uh, people like down Phil and Sound um, mm -hmm. new project. They decided they're they're not going to release albums anymore. They're mm -hmm. just going to do EPs so they can get that music out faster. Yeah. Um, what do you you know? Have you guys ever considered anything like we, that? We we actually have and. Uh, we're trying to get to the point, you know, like, to where one of the guys in the band is, is kind of a jack of all trades, and uh, our drummer, he's a real, he's really good on the computer, and he is. We've been recording demos with him, and uh, he's getting pretty good at it, and we would like to get to the point to where we could just record on tour, and if we record something cool, we'll release it. You right, know? that would be awesome. So you know. And so we have that main, that same mindset. Oh, it, you know, it gets a little complicated as far as uh, distribution and and promoting that. Right. Uh, so that's one yeah, of the reasons. Di digital's pretty easy, but getting people to actually find it is, yeah. is the hard part. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so uh, 
but yeah, we're that's that's definitely the direction we would like to take too in the you know near future. All right. Very cool. All right. Um, is there anything else you'd like to say to your fans or maybe your uh, your people back home in Tennessee? Huh? Well, my friends and family, all of our friends and families um, back home, we love you, and we will see you for the holidays. And to our fans, come out and see us in February, and we'll be back on the road, and let's rock.